Hi, this is Dan from phplistsupport.com and on this video I am going to cover some of the settings that you'll need to enter in the web interface to phplist. So here I have my installation here of phplist and I'll just go ahead and log in. This one's version 3.05, but should be the same on 3.06, etc. So what I want to talk about here is this configuration settings for the web interface to PHP list. So I'll go in and then the settings. Let me go up one notch here, config, config. And the first time that you log into a system, once you've installed it, there'll be an initialized database. So typically what you do is you create a database and a user, and then uh, you tell the software who, where the database is, what the database name is, and what the username is. And then the first step you would do is initialize the database. And what that means is it'll go into the MySQL database that you created, which at this point is empty, and it will go ahead and create all the tables and set them all up so you're, it's ready to go. So if, I, if I've already done that and I press this initialize, well, I'll go ahead and do it so you can see what happens. It says, oh, it's already there. So I've already done that, so it's complaining. That's fine. And then if you want to change the administrator's password, you can give it the email address and it will uh, password. You can basically update the password. It'll send you an email where you can update it. All right. I'm not going to change it at the moment. Oops, config, configuration. And now we'll go in. The third menu here on this configuration, config configuration, is verify the settings. So these are the things you'll need to go in and set up. So what you want to do here is you want to put the address, the host name of the computer where PHP list is installed. So in my case, it's pmail.phplistsupport.com. So that's the name. I'm going to put it in there. I'll, you don't put the HTTP or the slash slash. And then you have to tell it where your email server, the domain name of your server for email. Typically, that's going to be the same. And who, the email address of the person that's in charge of the system, this would be the admin. And then the name of the organization. So this might be your company name. And then uh, here you would tell it how often you want to check for a new version of PHP list. My suggestion is if PHP list is working, you know, why change anything? But uh, from time to time, there's some great enhancements that, that have been added to the system. And if you want any of those enhancements or if there's bug fixes that apply to you, you would want to go ahead and, and update it. So the report settings, these are the... Uh, the first one's a list of email addresses to carbon copy on the system message. So the system messages are things like, okay, we processed your list. There were so many subscribers. I sent so many in the last hour. So I subscribed. So we sent another, you know, so many e emails out. So those would be the system messages. And then the reports, same thing. And then send notification about subscribe updates and unsubscribed. Typically, I don't think you'd want that, but uh, you, can, you can put that as yes if you want. If I want to make that yes, I'd come in here and just say, yeah, go ahead and send me. Anytime anybody subscribes or unsubscribes or changes their email address, just send me an email so I know what's going on. If you have a big list, you're going to want that to be no. And I'll save it. There we go. So we'll come down a little further. The campaign settings. 
So the first one is the default for the from campaign. It'll plug that in. You can change it on every campaign. The second configuration parameter is the default email address to alert when sending starts. So there is a feature in PHP list where at the beginning and the end of each campaign, it'll send an email to somebody saying, I started this campaign and I finished this campaign. It's nice to get those. So you would want to put your address on there or whoever your admin is. Google tracking, uh, you can put a Google tracking code in your campaign. And this is just if you always want to put it in, you tell it yes. I don't use Google tracking, so I never use it. But I have customers that do. So the default HTML template to use when sending a message, that you can just leave at zero, but um, there are things called HTML templates, which I'll cover on another screencast. And the templates allow you to have a standard header and footer and look and feel to your email. And then there's a placeholder called content that you can put the variable information for that this particular email. So, okay, so you can select a default template to use when you're sending a message. A default footer. This, if you leave it alone, you'll see what, what happens when you send yourself a test message. The best way to use it is to just send yourself a test message. And if you want to change the way it looks, you can come in to this part of the configuration available from the web interface and then change that and send yourself a test message and so forth. I usually leave this alone. If you want a specific look and feel to your messages, you're going to want to change that. You don't have to to get it to have the system work. So there's a different footer when this when a message has been forwarded. And then the string to always append to remote URL when using send a web page. So there is a feature in the current P version of PHP list where you can actually design your email content and put it on a web page. When you're creating a message, you say send a web page. It actually reads the web page and converts it into an email for you. That's if you want to append something on the remote URL. When you're sending uh, text messages, how wide do you want the text to go out? You can set up your own cascading style sheet for messages without a template. And then uh, if there's domains that you are sending to that only accept text messages, then you can put those in, and in here in the config file, one per line. So these transactional settings, these are just the email addresses that are used to send transactions like one transaction right here would be, okay, somebody subscribe on your web page. They get a, a transactional email that says almost welcome to our newsletter. Somebody, hopefully you, has subscribed your email address to the following newsletters. And then click on this if you want to confirm it. Another transactional email is goodbye. Another one is welcome. One of them is, hey, we changed, we noticed you changed some of your membership details. And then uh, so forth. So these are the various settings to change all of those messages that get sent automatically when somebody does something. Who it's from, what it says, and what it looks like. And we'll come up here, the subscription UI settings. So this is the subscription page user interface settings. So is there only one visible list? Should it be hidden in the page and automatically subscribe users who sign up? Yes, because you figure, well, if there's only one list and people are signing up, they want to sign up to that list. So that's yes. And then uh, you can tell it how how wide you want the field where people can type their name or their email addresses. 
for a text message. Here's the header of the public pages. It actually pulls in some CSS style sheets that makes it look like the PHP list user interface. You could change that here if you'd like. Make it look like your web page. And this is the footer for the subscribe pages. Segmentation settings, basically categories for lists. Um, I did this. I have uh, a system with a lot of lists on it. And so I just said, well, these are this customer's list. These are my lists. And these are the other customer's lists. So it's easier to find things when I'm selecting a list to send to. There's a default subscribe page. There's the URL where people can sign up to the lists or unsubscribe. So they can subscribe, unsubscribe, basically create a do not send list and so forth. So there's some URLs for some of that housekeeping for each person, each user. And then these are some settings for your create a message. This is the HTML editor, FCK editor area. It's 600 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. 600 pixels is a good width for a, an HTML email message. So in TinyMCE, there are other settings, depending on if that's installed or not. So these are the settings that are changeable from the PHP list web, web interface. And uh, the main ones you want to set up here that I see people are confused about is this would be the name of your, basically the, the, the installation host for your PHP list. So in my case, it's pmail.phplistsupport.com. And then uh, this was going to show up in the email. It's going to be pmail.phplistsupport.com. And uh, make sure you get these right. If they're not right, the system hit, does funny things. It seems like it's not working right. And typically it's something like one of these settings here or in the config.php file. So I'm going to go over that next. I want to thank you for watching this. I am Dan Waterloo, dan at phplistsupport.com. Thanks for watching.